Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here with our initial value examples video for linear first order differential equations. We're going to work three examples of initial value problems for you in this video. You can see we've got them here with their conditions next to them. So if you're interested in a particular example in this list, you can skip to it in our video. Otherwise, you can just work through all of these with us as we go along. Let's look at our first example, dy dx plus 2y equals e to the 2x, and our condition is y of 0 equals 3. So remember this says when x is 0, y is equal to 3, and we'll use that condition to solve for our constant and get our particular solution. You'll notice this is already in the normal form, so we go ahead and find our integrating factor first, like we would solving the general solution. So our integrating factor is going to be e to the integral of our function p here next to y, which is 2, so e to the integral of 2 dx, and the integral of 2 is easy, right? That's just going to give us 2x in the exponent. So our integrating factor is e to the 2x. We'll go ahead and multiply the entire equation by our integrating factor. And now remember what we do is we know that the left hand side is going to be a shortcut as a product rule so we don't distribute on the left side. If you want to distribute on the left side you certainly can. But we know this is a product rule and so we're going to only distribute to the right side here. So e to the 2x times e to the 2x will give us e to the 4x. We'll add the exponents there. And when we take the antiderivative with respect to x, we'll have to do the integral here, but remember on the left side, this is a product rule of y times the integrating factor. So taking the antiderivative will just give us y times the integrating factor equal to the antiderivative of e to the 4x dx. This is a pretty okay integral to do here, so we'll get y times e to the 2x equals, remember the reciprocal of 4 will come out, we'll get 1 fourth e to the 4x plus some constant. And now let's go ahead and solve for y. So we'll need to divide everything by e to the 2x. That will give us y equals 1 fourth. If I divide e to the 4x by e to the 2x, that'll give me e to the 2x. Plus my constant divided by e to the 2x would really be c e to the negative 2x. And now that we have our general solution, let's find our particular solution using our initial condition here. So y of 0 equals 3 says when x is 0, then y is 3. So we'll go ahead and solve for our constant using that. So we'll plug in 3 for y equals 1 fourth. e to the 2x would become e to the 0 plus c e to the negative 2x would also become e to the 0. These e to the 0 terms are really just 1, right? So we get 3 is equal to 1 fourth plus c. And if you get a common denominator, say 12 over 4 here, minus 1 fourth, we'll actually get that c is 11 over 4 for this one. So if we replace our c with 11 fourths now, then we will get the answer y is equal to 1 fourth e to the 2x plus 11 over 4 e to the negative 2x. And that is our particular solution for this differential equation with condition. Looking at our second example, xy prime plus y equals x, and our condition is y of 2 equals 4. First thing you want to notice here is that our linear equation is not in normal form. We have not just y prime in the front, so we need to divide everything by x, so we get the correct integrating factor moving forward. So that'll be y prime plus 1 over x times y is equal to 1. Now from here I'll get my integrating factor. So my integrating factor is going to be equal to e to the integral of p. My function here is now 1 over x, so e to the integral 1 over x dx. Integral 1 over x dx, that's just a log rule, so we get e to the ln x, and e to the ln something is just that something, right? So our integrating factor here is x, and we'll multiply the entire equation by that, so x times our y prime plus 1 over xy equals 1. Remember on the left side we're just going to get a product rule anyway, so I won't distribute here, so we'll say x times y prime plus 1 over xy. But now I will go ahead and say x on the other side. 
I'll integrate this side dx and I'll integrate this side dx but remember this is just a product rule of y times the integrating factor so when we take the antiderivative over here we just get y times the integrating factor which is y times x the antiderivative on the right side power rule will get one half x squared plus c and now to solve for y I want to go ahead and divide both sides by x right so dividing everything by x I will get y is equal to one half x plus c over x and this is our general solution we need to now go ahead and use our condition to get our c so we go ahead and say y of 2 equals 4 means when x is 2 then y is 4 we plug that in and we say 4 is equal to 1 half times 2 plus c over 2. So that'll give us 4 equals 1 plus c over 2. Subtracting 1 from both sides will give us 3 is equal to c over 2. And then if we multiply both sides by 2, that will give us that c is equal to 6. And so our particular solution here is going to be plugging back into our general solution. We'll get y equals 1 half x plus 6 over x. Looking at our last example with you, y prime minus 2xy equals x. Our condition is y of 0 equals negative 1. For this one here, it's already in the normal form. So we just go ahead and find our integrating factor right away. Our integrating factor is going to be e to the integral of negative 2x is our p here. So e to the integral of negative 2x dx. The integral of negative 2x is negative x squared. So our integrating factor is e to the negative x squared. We'll say e to the negative x squared times everything. And then remember, we will distribute on the right side only. So we're just going to say e to the negative x squared times this left side and leave that. That's going to be a product rule anyway. We know that. And then we get x times e to the negative x squared on the right side. Okay, this is a product rule of y times the integrating factor. So integrating with respect to x, we know we'll get y times the integrating factor. Over here, we will get x e to the negative x squared, the antiderivative with respect to x of that. This is now a u substitution, so we're going to let u equal everything in the exponential. So u equals negative x squared means that du is negative 2x dx. And if you want to solve for exactly what you have here, which is x dx, you could divide both sides by negative 2. In other words, negative 1 half du is what will replace x dx, right? So we can put all that in there. Let's do that up here. So we will get y times our integrating factor still. We just have negative 1 half times the integral of e to the u du. All right, so let's go ahead and do our antiderivative. That's pretty easy over there. y e to the negative x squared equals negative 1 half e to the u plus our constant. And now we'll go ahead and replace the u, get back in terms of x there. So y e to the negative x squared equals negative 1 half e to the negative x squared plus our c. And we'll need to divide both sides by our e to the negative x squared, right, to solve for y. That'll give us the general solution. So here we'll get y is equal to, the exponentials will go away in the first term, negative 1 half plus, now c divided by an exponential with a negative in the exponent there really makes this positive, right? So c e to the positive x squared. That's our general solution. What we'll need to do now is use our condition. So this says when x is 0, then we know y is negative 1. Now let's go ahead and scroll down and finish this. So with this condition, we'll plug in negative 1 for y. And we'll plug in 0 for x. We'll get c e to the 0 then, right? So we'll get negative 1 is equal to negative half plus, this is c times 1, just becomes c there. 
We'll need to add a half to both sides. That will become negative half is equal to C for this one. And then if we go ahead and take our C and put it in our general solution, we will get Y is equal to negative half minus a half e to the x squared. And you could factor out your half if you like, but we'll go ahead and leave that there. All right, thanks for watching our initial value examples video for linear first order equations. Hopefully some of these have helped you. We'll see you next time.